Welcome to Functional Horsemanship. This is a real hot day in June. It's 100 degrees so far. It's about 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And I'm here with Roy. He's a 27-year-old 27 27 -year quarter horse I used to rope off of. And don't get a chance to get him out so often. Thought I'd get him out and talk about snaffle bits. DK wrote me. Uh, she was having a problem on a horse she bought. Uh, the horse, before she bought it, she saw somebody riding it in a snaffle bit. And the horse did real well. But she says... Uh, now that she's riding it in a snaffle bit, that uh, the horse is uh, bracing against the bit or, or gapping at its mouth, throwing its head up, and she doesn't know uh, what's going on. But first of all, I wanted to I wanted to make sure that that DK uh, was using the true snaffle bit. This is a true snaffle bit. This is a hinged D-ring snaffle. It's a D-ring. It's hinged here, so it moves. And a snaffle bit is a broken bit in the middle, but it has no shanks. Just like I have on Roy here, it's a, a D-ring or a dog bone snaffle with a broken bit in the middle. And what this does is bit provides no leverage whatsoever. So one pound of pull or one pound of pressure on the bit this way is equal to one pound in the horse's mouth. It's not a hinged, it's not a, a, a leverage bit. I want to make sure that she wasn't using what a lot of people refer to as a, a snaffle bit simply because it's broken in the middle. This is not a snaffle bit. This is actually called an Argentinian bit. Uh, it has some other names as well. But just because it's broken in the middle doesn't mean it's a snaffle. This bit has, has, has shanks that provide leverage. And you notice this bit uh, used to be ridden with a, with a curved chain as opposed to a curved strap, leather, a leather strap that goes underneath the chin. How this bit works is as it lays in the horse's mouth, the reins are attached to this ring. As the rein, as the uh, shank is pulled back, the chain goes tight underneath the jawline here, as well as putting pressure in the horse's mouth. There's four places you can put pressure in this horse's mouth off a bit. One of them is the corners of the mouth when you pull back. Another one is across the tongue. You can imagine if uh, somebody had reins hooked to these these uh, shanks right here and pull real hard or pull down that you could actually pinch the tongue in this uh, broken bit right here. So again this is not a snaffle bit because it has leverage. A true snaffle bit doesn't have leverage. It's broken in the center and it doesn't have any leverage. It has a D ring or, a, or an egg butt ring or, a, or a, uh, an O ring. You have to make sure that when you're riding a snaffle, and I've got one hooked to some makate right here, that you don't use a, a curb chain, that you use a curb strap. All this does is when the bit is pulled to one side, it keeps, it keeps the bit from pulling through the horse's mouth. You see some of the bits that have bars on like the old cavalry bits. Uh, that's meant to keep the bit from pulling through the horse's mouth. So again, when you have a, a true snaffle or any, any actually any bit in the horse's mouth, there's four places to apply, provide leverage. On the corners of the mouth and the bars of the mouth, that's in between their front teeth and their molars. It's across their tongue. And it could be at the roof of their mouth too. Now a snaffle bit has a hard time, or even a broken bit like this, has a hard time impacting on the roof of the horse's mouth. But on a broken bit like this in a snaffle, you're going to be impacting on the corner of the horse's mouth here, the bars, that's that, again, that space between its front teeth and its molars, and the tongue. And I've, I've seen cut tongues off a of snaffle bit, so you can get, you can get uh, uh, pretty rowdy with them, be pretty heavy-handed, and uh, you can actually cut their tongue. So DK, I hope you're actually riding a snaffle bit. If that's what the horse is used to, if you uh, put a leverage bit in there and you're not very light with your hands, you know, one pound of pull can be two, three, four, or five pounds of pull on this end. And make sure that you're not using a chain, but you're just using a strap to keep the bit from pulling through the mouth if you're using a true snaffle. Another problem you may be having It's not giving the horse any relief. Okay, well, 
It's been a long time. Come on. Back, back. Let's go back. If I don't give him the release, if I'm pulling on his mouth continuously, he's going to get agitated. He doesn't know what I want. See, so he starts raising his head, he starts opening his mouth, gaping at his mouth like this. Again. Pull on his mouth, see him gaping his mouth like this. Okay. Try to be as, as light as you can. If you want to want this horse to give clear, you want to give him clear signals because you want him to know exactly what you want to do, you, know, you got to be very clear about it. Tip his head. I'm not pulling his head over. I want him to put his move his head in this direction. I'm just tipping his head to the outside. Again, the other way, I'm just tipping his head to the outside. If I pull back hard enough on this bit, and not give him any release, he doesn't know what I want. I see a lot of people riding, want the horse to back. They'll pull on the bit, or they'll pull into their chest like this, get the bit high, and the horse doesn't know what I want because so he's getting no release. Again, so try to be as light-handed as you can. Again, it doesn't require much. Just a tip here, a tip here. If you want on the back, pull and release. There's just enough pressure to get what you want and release. Pull, then release, and the horse understands. He learns by that release. So what you may be doing in that snaffle bit, especially if you have a dressage or English background, people tend to ride with the horse bridled up, uh, broken at the pull, and they tend to ride with, with, uh, with pretty straight reins or pretty tight reins. So what you want to do is give the horse some release, like this. And then try this, try this uh, out next time you're, you're on your horse. If you want to tip the horse's head around, don't pull straight back like this. You get in his mouth too much. Just tip his head. Just give him that suggestion. All I'm doing is giving him a suggestion. I'm trying to be as light as I possibly can to get the horse to understand what I want out of him. DK, I hope that helps. Functional horsemanship. Have a safe journey.